Welcome to Always Home Care Caregiver Training in our module on caring for someone who's on hospice. I'm Mark Rosny, Certified Senior Advisor and President of Always Home Care, and joining me today is Dee Pettinger, Registered Nurse and Masters of Public Health. This presentation is about what is hospice. We're going to discuss specific to the caregivers, what a caregiver can have with a hospice patient, some traditional hospice myths, the role of the hospice team and our caregivers, and patient rights. So what is hospice? Hospice is not about death, but making the most of the life that remains. It's palliative care, not curative. Palliative care just means it's specialized medical care for people with serious illnesses. It focuses on providing patients with relief from the symptoms such as pain and the stress of having a serious illness, regardless of the diagnosis. The goal is simply to pr improve the quality of life for both the patient and the family. Some common conditions you may see are cancers, Alzheimer's dementia, ALS or Lou Gehrig's, COPD, Parkinson's dementia, and renal failure. The hospice patient. So physicians write a referral stating the patient's diagnosis and explain why death is imminent and expected within the next six months. This does not mean that care is only provided for six months. The hospice can be provided as long as a person's physician and hospice team certify that their condition remains life-limiting. The hospice team consists of volunteers, physicians, spiritual counselors, social workers, bereavement coordinators, home health aides, therapists, and nurses. At the center of the team is, of course, always the patient and the family with the goal being to keep the person as pain-free and symptom-free while offering both spiritual and supportive counseling. How does hospice work? Medical professionals make a referral to the hospice. Members of the hospice staff conduct an assessment of the patient's overall needs and establish the care team. Along with the primary caregiver, the hospice team and patient outline and implement an appropriate care plan. The hospice experience. Day-to-day -day care is provided by a loved one or a private caregiver. Nurses visit weekly to assess current condition, plan ongoing care needs, and report any changes back to the physician. It's important to note that the experience reflects the patient's wishes rather than the physician. Hospice services, pain management and other symptoms. We offer support for the emotional and spiritual aspects of dying. Pro hospice provides medications, medicinal supplies and equipment. They deliver special services like speech and physical therapy, make short-term inpatient care available when pain or other symptoms become too difficult to manage at home. And of course the cornerstone of hospice is aggressive pain management and in fact the pain is whatever the person says it is. Medications are arranged for in advance and delivered to the home and the nurse will provide specific instructions on the use of the pain medication. So hospice care can be delivered wherever a person calls home. And in fact, the recent statistics show that most care is in the place of residence, um, primarily the, the primary residence. Occasionally, nursing homes, residential facilities will allow hospice and do allow hospice patients in. And finally, hospice inpatient facilities. Home caregivers. So what are your guidelines for assisting a home hospice patient? You'll see that caregiving for a hospice patient is similar to other non-hospice clients and in fact many of the same services are needed. The role of the caregiver is to join the home in-home and hospice facility team in providing personal care and this can include access to urinals, bedpans, or toileting, management, facilitating the undergarment usage, 
improving mobility to reduce the pressure ulcers, preparing and delivering meals, making sure that the patient is properly hydrated, keeping a, a tidy and clean house, and simply ensuring safe and a pleasant environment with companionship. Home caregivers can work to keep a patient comfortable by ensuring that the patient has slacks and skirts that have elasticized or tied waistbands, which are easier for both you and the patient to get on and off. The clothes that have snaps, zippers, or buttons, make sure they're in the front, that they're easily within reach and easy to manipulate. Make sure shoes don't slip off easily and that they have non-skid tread. And if you can, um, have clothes that are interchangeable and color coordinated so that everything matches. Caregivers can also work to keep their patients active, which for bed bound or wheelchair bound patients still helps improve circulation, lung and heart function, posture, and mental alertness. Following is a discussion on our company policy with topical and oral medication and the assistance we can provide. Oral medications include pills and pre-filled liquid syringes. The caregivers will administer oral medication following specific detailed instructions provided by the hospice company. Caregivers will not withhold medication alter a dosage, substitute medication, or otherwise deviate from the exact instructions provided by hospice. Some examples might include medication uh, to be given at 8 a.m. when the patient reports pain from 1 to 6 would be, and they'll give you a specific pill and color code it. If the patient rate, rates their pain from 9 to 10, there may be a second medication or pre-filled liquid syringe. For topical, you may have patches that are needed to be applied, and the hospice team should provide specific instructions on appropriate locations, what to do with the prior patch, and how often patches are changed. The same holds true with, true with creams, and again, hospice must provide written instruction and what you can and should document should there be any changes in skin conditions. IV medications and suppositories are common in hospice. However, caregivers are not to administer IV or injectable medications or suppositories. Always home care registered nurses can provide and administer IV or injectables as needed. And of course, always home care nurses will always follow specific detailed instructions provided by the hospice company. As a caregiver who's working with a hospice patient, you are going to see them go through this end of life experience and some of the things that you're going to observe might be uh, very typical for anybody going through that experience. Uh, this, these uh, commonalities were uh, something that were reported by a long-term hospice nurse, worked with many, many people as they transitioned through death, and um, just some of the commonalities that she saw again and again with different patients is months before their eating habits change, they're going to talk to, they're going to claim that they see people who aren't there. Then weeks before death, they, they start to sleep with their eyes open. They may stop breathing and then start up again. And then when it gets closer and closer, so days and hours before death, the color of their skin could change. They're starting to breathe much more shallow than they were. And then right towards the end, she explained that it's, it's uh, very common that everybody experiences the same thing as they die. Uh, they get non-responsive. They take little fish breaths. So their, their mouth is open kind of like they're gasping for air. Then they turn their head to one side, they have a frown on their face, that's the end, they take a couple long breaths and then they're, they're gone. 
So part of the caregiver role is to document any changes and observations we make during our time with the patient. And this is going to include anything noticeable such as coughing, nausea, thirst. You need to note any skin infection or changes in the urine color, smell, or frequency. If you see changes in mood and behavior, please put that in the record as well. Or of course, swelling to the, the legs, ankles, or hands, and any marked change in appetite. And these daily records are important. It provides an ongoing ability to see where that patient's um, care is progressing and if they're progressing as planned. So things to immediately report to the hospice team would be a change in breathing, a marked change in pain, vomiting, skin color, and if a patient loses consciousness or becomes confused, um, all of a sudden can't perform the normal activities of daily living, they profess that they can't see or there's a new skin sore and of course death has occurred. As a caregiving professional, remember that we are part of the hospice team and as such we need to work with the other team members in a professional manner. Any concerns with the services being provided should be brought to the attention of your supervisor or and not to be discussed with a client or client's families. If there is a medical issue such as a wound um, or uh, it changes to medication, bring that to the attention of the hospice company. And of course, if a patient should expire while you're there, report that immediately to the hospice company. Since we're covering the uh, medical aspects of hospice, I wanted to point out here that when some client of ours is not on hospice, the same medical rules, the same guidelines for caregivers apply. They're not on hospice, but we would still bring in a medical professional, and they're called home health uh, companies, for any wound care, any vital signs, medical management, uh, any kind of medical deterioration, coughing, dif difficulty breathing, skin changes, medical concerns, we bring in a either a doctor or uh, for ongoing care in the home, home health. So there are some common myths about hospice and the following slides are going to attempt to provide you the reality. The first myth that we should talk about is that families should be isolated from a dying patient. And the reality is, is that hospice staff continue to believe that when a hospice family member, including kids, experience the dying process in a caring environment, it helps counteract that fear of their own mortality and the mortality of their loved one. So hospice is just what happens when there's nothing else to be done. The reality, of course, is that hospice is actually something more. It's care for the patient and the family when an illness cannot be cured. It's based on the concept that a comfort care is care. And people are referred into hospice as a, a mode of therapy when nothing else is appropriate for terminal care. So often patients and family members are concerned that hospice costs more than conventional care and studies have found that actually hospice is frequently less expensive than conventional care during the last six months because there's little high cost technology being used. And to a patient, most patients are eligible for Medicare, Medicaid, and will pay few out of pocket expenses related to their hospice. So death is too frightening to talk about. It's not normal. The actuality is death can be a positive experience for a dying person, but for the family as well. But to do this, we have to talk about death and the needs of the patient so that we can make sure that their idea of a good death um, happens. 
then the fear is that death is painful. And in fact, pain can be relieved safely with little danger of death or the worry of addiction. And hospice caregivers and most doctors are familiar with the proper use of analgesic drugs, which when given with the right dose at the right time, can manage the pain without sedating a patient. So just as caregivers have specific responsibilities, hospice patients also have very specific rights. Hospice patients first and foremost need to be treated with respect. We need to ensure that they have quality end-of-life care, that the patient understands and receives spoken and written notice of their rights and responsibilities so that they can understand during the assessment meetings with the hospice and always staff. And of course, they're entitled to receive information on any advanced directives, including living will and health surrogates. Hospice patients can also receive pain management and symptom control, just as they have the right to deny care and symptom control. They should be involved in the development of the plan of care and be informed of any changes. They have the right to choose their attending physician and have continue to have confidentiality of their medical record and remain free from mistreatment, neglect, or any type of abuse. And of course, we need to inform patients about the services that are covered under their hospice benefit and about this, what the hospice provides with any limitations on those services. For more in-depth information about hospice and palliative care, contact the Department of Health and Human Services or the Hospice Foundation of America at the websites listed here. And if you have any additional questions after reviewing this recording, please email training at alwayshomecare.org and we will get your questions answered.